Little Red Wagon. Uh, definitely a touch of the George Jones is there. Or in fact, uh, somebody mentioned just now, who was it? Uh, Lefty Frizzell, I think somebody shouted at. Yes, yeah, Skeets McDonald came in. Were you um, listening to country people like that as much as, say, Elvis was an enormous influence? Well, I've listened to both types. Uh, George was, uh, was coming on strong then, you know, and I didn't know which way to go. <laughs> and so I went with rock and roll and Old George told me, he said, nah, you better stay with country. He said, I'm going to stay with it till, uh, till he comes back, and I'm going to be number one, and which he was it, over in the States, you know. You were pretty, and, uh, pretty friendly with George. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, me and George Jones and Tommy Sands and people like it, Sonny Burns, all local boys at that time, you know. But whereas you fell into uh, Rockabilly quite smoothly, I think perhaps George Jones had to be nudged a little bit, am I right? Uh, yeah, he didn't, he didn't like it at all. But he made some fine records for the same label as you. Yeah, yeah, he made uh, two or three rock and roll that did pretty good. I get rockabilly, you know. But uh, he didn't, he didn't like it at all. He, he, he lo loved the country, you know, which he is country. He, nowadays, it's a, a different type of country, country western music now. But back then, it was hillbilly they called it. You know, sure. that's where they got the rockabilly from, I guess. Most people of um, your your ilk that's the word to use. Always mention Hank Williams indefinitely. Does he figure at all? Uh, well, I, I, uh, after, uh, well, I was singing that, see, stuff like that, Webb Pierce and Hank Williams and all of them at the time that I changed over to rock and roll. And blues, I had it all mixed in together. Mm -hmm. and when I cut those records, I just went over and I wanted to change to that rock because I done heard it and it fascinated me. And, and when I met Elvis and saw him and all that, it just, I just wanted to do it. This is something that everybody wanted to do it then. You hit it off okay with Elvis. Did you get on well? Not really. Uh, when I first met him, uh, he didn't say nothing but uh, hi. And that's it. And he took a bunch of girls down and showed him their his new pink Cadillac. And we didn't get to talk much. And he, you know, he uh, he, he was that way though. In, in those days, I guess a kid that gets that big so fast that you know that it's it's something. Slightly overwhelming yeah. to say. Yeah, this, yeah. yeah, I know it's, it's just like it is for me over here. I, I mean, I've, I've lost the, all control and, and the things. It's just amazing. It, I don't know how I even stand it. It's, it's, it's hard for me. I'm just now getting settled down from the shock. I, and I can imagine what he went through. <laughs> the nice thing about your situation, though, Sonny, is that you've not really been alienated, if that's the word to use, by things that have come along in the past, say, 15 or so years, because you've not really intended to, um, to ride with trends and so on. You've, you've um, kept your guitar, I presume, in the loft or something, and then you've, you've picked it out at the right time. Yeah, I guess that's what you want to call it. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, was, I, I, I went back and forth after those sessions singing different types of music. At one time, uh, I had a... Uh, eight-piece colored group it, and I played mostly rhythm and blues and stuff. This was after the uh, the rockabilly period? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I went back and then I went uh, had a band that uh, we played a little pop and rhythm and blues and country uh, all of it, you know, we was real versatile we could play anything and just like it sounded on record, you know, which uh, that wasn't helping my career any but, but it uh, was dance hall stuff that's what they wanted. Mm -hmm. and, and you I, could you could obviously see Things changing as the, the years rolled by in the 50s. Yeah. And uh, the harder sound was coming in. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, it went on great for years, but it, I don't know what year it was that it started slowing down and the country and western started coming back again, you know. Country and western died there for uh, about that time, you know. It, it was uh, no country and western stars at all, hardly except the big ones, like Ernest Tubb and people like that. And when it died and stuff like that, and this this come along well it made a whole change did you ever feel at uh, that time your future lay in country i mean could you have not gone over and uh, said right i'm going to leave the rock and rock and roll and rockabilly behind and smooth myself out and go with the trends but i, I think I, I would probably done better if i would tried country uh -huh. I, I probably would have because i had a, a really a 
a smooth, I could sing ballads better. And, and then I couldn't rock and roll at the time, you know. And then I just jumped on that rock and roll just out of the clear blue, and, and then I started rocking. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play one of those rocking tracks now. This is called Hey Mama. Well, look at my baby now, hey, she's sweet. Doom, ba doom, ba doom. Hey Mama. Sonny, who was in charge of all these sessions? Who would actually oversee them? Who would produce them? Uh, Jack Starnes, uh, the manager of the Lefty Vizelle back then. After he lost Lefty, well, then he was managing two or three local boys around Houston. He, I think he was George's manager, and, and uh, him and Pappy Daly was together. Uh, they might have been, Pappy might have been managing too, I don't know. But uh, they're the ones that started to start a record label themselves. And he would handle the material yeah, that you, uh -huh. you would play to him yeah. in advance and everything. He would yeah. say, yes, we'll use that. No, we don't. Know. And um, what, do you think he perhaps had an ear on to, um, to Memphis, to what Sam Phillips was doing with the, the Presley records and so on? Do you he, think he was acutely aware of uh, how Sam Phillips was yeah. approaching Elvis's material? Yeah, but uh, in a way, uh, I knew how it was, but I didn't know how to tell the, the studio there to do it. And, and I mentioned the, something about an echo chamber or something, and, and, it, and that's... He started putting that in there, it sounded pretty good, and so that's, that's how he got as good of sessions as he got in that little place, I guess. So you were quite happy there. You obviously never felt the need to hike across a couple of states well, and go to Memphis yourself. Yeah, I, I would love to, but it's just the money situation and, and the time. See, I had a family and, and everything, and I didn't have time to do all that and didn't have the money. Were you a full-time musician? I mean, what, were you a semi-professional? No, I, I was just a singer. I was... A different type of singer. I could sing anything, and I've, I've sang all kinds of pop, uh, rhythm and blues, you know, and stuff like that. You had a day job as well? Yeah, yeah I've always uh, had a business, and that's what kept me going, more or less, you know. I couldn't have made it on, on a, what I made out of music. I see. How was, um, how was this tour set up at the time? Uh, were you approached uh, recently to, to be told that your records were being issued here again? Uh, for yeah, the first uh, time, really. In fact, they've never come out before. Yeah. Uh, Ted Carroll uh, came to the States and, and, and visited me and talked to me about it and surprised me. I, I never <laughs> thought about that. And, and Ray Topping uh, uh, came over and they interviewed me and talked to me and told me what was happening and stuff, and I couldn't believe it, but <laughs> I eventually got used to it and, and, and felt good about it. And, and uh, it's always happened. You must That's be the way it now aware of the uh, other visitors of your type that have been over here recently and done very well. Yeah, uh, yeah. I've heard of uh, some of the old ones that people. I used to know over there, you know, and like Sleep the Biff. I didn't, I didn't have no idea that he'd ever do anything neither. But over here, he's, he's doing been very well. successful. Yeah. That's right. Yes. And uh, he's now recording again and got a whole new career. Yeah. And that's the nice thing about what's happened with you. You're back recording as well, as you told us. Yeah, you? I just did a four size. Well, I think it's going to be a little LP. It's coming out uh, as soon as possible, I imagine. It'll be on the uh, Ace label, I believe. Yeah, it, yeah that's and right. it's, still, it's still got the rock and roll there. I, I, I wanted to do rock and roll, so I wrote a couple of new ones, you know, for that, especially while I was over here, just to uh, get back in the... And if, if we got the session going, it, I have something original like, a, like I had to start with. Mm -hmm. I could have wrote some country western, but I, that wasn't what I'm here for. I wanted to do rock and roll. Splendid. And you're getting some of those royalties at last. I'm oh, yeah. Finally. <laughs> Excellent. Now, the other good bit of news that um, we shall talk about giving a few of these away later on, we've got um, a copy or several copies of this new 78 that yeah. Ace have put out of the old material. Yeah, that, that, that's... I mean, it looks beautiful. What do you think to it? Uh, that, uh, that's the way it come out originally, so it's no, nothing new to me. It was 78s back then. You know, mostly everything was 78s. Well, there haven't been many 78s pressed over here for, what, 20 years, I should think. Yeah. Is that right? I, yeah. And it's, this uh, is my first time, remember. <laughs> he says handling it with care, but it won't break because it's made on uh, proper vinyl, not uh, shellac, as yeah. they were in the 50s. Anyway, we'll give a few away later, but let's play one of the tracks... The B-side, in fact, is called uh, I Can't Lose. I Can't Lose. I Can't Lose. Hey, I can't lose. Well, stuff I use.
well, it was uh, once an A-side, but it's now the B-side to Rockin' Daddy on the new Ace 78. And uh, if you're as proud as I am to have one in your hand, stay tuned because we'll give away half a dozen later on. You're off to where tonight? France, I uh, France, yeah. yeah. Uh, my first time there, too. <laughs> well, I love you. I believe it's Lil, is it? Uh, yeah. Yes, the Rockin' Counselor. Well, would, would you like to come back and uh, do some more oh, shows? Oh, yes, I love it. I would love to come back as soon as possible. Uh-huh. Perhaps to promote the uh, the new tracks when they yeah. get issued. Yeah. yeah, I hope so. I think it's, uh, manager Paul Barrett was talking about uh, in March of next year, but I don't know for sure. I guess that that's as soon as possible. I don't know. <laughs> and the reaction, let's talk about the uh, the shows you've done over here. The reaction, from what I gather, I've yet to see, has been quite tremendous. Well, You've approached it simply by doing the songs as they were done at the time, and that's yeah. what people have wanted. Yeah, I, I could still do them just like they was then, and uh, that's what the kids really loved. And that, I'll tell you, it's, a, it's tore me up. I just can't believe it's all happening. You know, if that's what I wanted to happen back in the 50s, and it didn't happen. <laughs> what would you say if you took this, this show back to the States and gave it to them back where it started in Texas? Do you think it would go? I, I don't really know. I don't... I don't I don't think it would, because it's all a modern type country western now. It's uh, uh, rockabilly. Just I don't know. I wish it, I wish Might it be would. be an interesting experiment. Eh? Yeah, I'm going back and I'm going to try it. I'm going to try to do something to make them get back in the rockabilly beat. You know. Some of those uh, old clubs must be still there. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they're still there, but just all country western. Mm -hmm. Everything. Yeah, and they've got new ones too. It's all big, big stuff. Sonny, you shall have to lead the brigade back there. I'm sure. Yeah, I hope so. Thank you very much for coming. And before we say goodbye, let's just play one more track from the Star Day period, probably the best thing you ever cut. And uh, I believe you wrote this specially connected with Elvis, Pink and Black. That's right, yeah. All right. About the Cadillacs and the shoes yeah. and everything. I even had the Pink and Black shoes, and I had the Pink Cadillac and everything, because he had one, and I had to get me one. And I thought that would help at the time, you know. <laughs> and this is what it sounded like on record. Thank you very much indeed, Sonny Fisher.